everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Kaylin and I've been doing a no buy month and I just wanted to share some updates because I am coming into the last few days of my no buy obviously because it's reaching the end of October. I kind of can't believe it's already nearly the end of the month. It's made me feel like a no buy year might actually be achievable so I just wanted to talk about some of the savings I've made and how it has been actually like a really life-changing experience for me even though it's only been a month of my life and I sat down earlier and I compiled a very technologically advanced list of um all of my like unnecessary expenses last month that I found in my bank statements compared to this month so it's very messy but that's last month that's this month um, obviously visually you can just tell there's a huge difference so that really shocked me when I went through it all and like the comparison of how long it took to write down everything from September compared to October and it's just really encouraging to see that it has made an enormous difference because I didn't even know that it had really like I was hoping it had but I didn't know that it was this big so um yeah I wanted to talk about like why this has been so life-changing for me and why I'm now excited about starting a no buy year rather than kind of apprehensive or worried that I might not be able to do it. Um, I also think it's changed my perspective because I now know that even if you don't do it perfectly it still makes a massive difference like you can have moments where you feel like you've slipped up and made a mistake during your no buy but it's still overall like the change of habits like they all amount to a lot and it's still like basically one mistake doesn't affect the entire result. So yeah, I was just gonna go through with you and tell you like last month, the sense of horror that I had whenever I added up certain things because I do know my problem areas with spending in general, but I do think of myself as a generally frugal person. I know that I can have phases of becoming less conscious of my spending and sort of slipping up, but I didn't think of myself as somebody who had a major problem with particular items. I know that I have a fondness for coffee shops and I used to go like every single day when my kids were in school so I could write because I find it a much more tranquil environment because you're not looking at your own mess and there's not as many distractions and I find I could kind of churn out more books which I do actually still think is the case because I haven't been writing much at all recently although it could just be like a temporary thing I don't know yet and I think if I manage to create a more peaceful looking environment in my kitchen I might be more inclined to do more writing Um, I still think I'm really working through decluttering and I need to work on certain like problem areas that are just like piles of stuff that stresses me out looking at it so I will run through last month and um, basically I was a lot more tap happy with my card than I thought and whenever I added up the total of certain things it just really shocked me. For example, I spent £220 last month on clothes which I had no idea I'd done but it just shows you how things add up. I knew I had bought a pair of dungarees from Lucy and Yak that were nearly £70 so I knew that that was like a big purchase but I didn't realise how much on top of that I had actually spent just on bits and pieces. Um, and I spent £85 on coffee in coffee shops, which is really surprising to me because, like, you do just think of it as a few pounds here and there. But I just realised when I went through, I was literally writing coffee, 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 coffee. And it shows you, like, how much of a habit and how much of a problem it actually is. And one cup of coffee might not matter as a treat, but if you're doing it all the time, it does add up. I spent £160 in home bargains and I couldn't even tell you what that was on. That's the thing that I find so problematic about shops like that. Like you, you just eat your money and you think you're getting bargains, obviously because of the title of the shop. Um, but they're not really because it adds up to large amounts. And I could see how if somebody has a credit card and they're using it there, they could very quickly fall into debt. I'm lucky that I don't have a credit card because... I haven't had that problem and I don't intend to get one because I prefer to just pay for things with the money I already have and 
That way I don't feel like things are getting out of control. I spent £66 on Amazon last month. I also have no idea what that was on. This is the part that's really crazy if you think about it like you've spent all this money that's really eaten into your budget but you have no idea what it even was after the event. And some of it might have been like necessary items but I'm pretty sure a lot of it wasn't. And I just think Prime is too, it makes it too easy to just click and go and I've really been working on stopping that habit this month. And I'm thinking about cancelling Prime altogether. I don't know if I'll keep it for Christmas time because there's a couple of things I need to order that are like bigger presents for my kids and I would like to be able to get the like free delivery with that but we'll see. I haven't decided fully yet. So this month I thought I was doing badly but compared to last month like it's really not much. So I bought at the beginning of the month I bought one cup of coffee when I met a friend. Um, I haven't bought myself coffee apart from that surprisingly. I bought I got a free cup in Starbucks during the month I know that and I know that my partner has bought me coffee a couple of times on his days off work but I haven't suggested going there and um, yeah like I feel like I've been quite disciplined with the coffee and breaking the habit. Um, I replaced my moisturiser which had run out so that was what the Amazon purchase this month was so actually that kind of was a necessity so I'm not going to like beat myself up over that one. And there was a payment to eBay which I figured out after the event was my daughter's school had requested that parents send in craft supplies for a project that they were doing and it was like really specific like certain colours of tissue paper and certain colours of felt so I found them on eBay and ordered them there for her and um, so that wasn't really like an impulse buy either. I did buy McDonald's one day for me and my partner for lunch. We were getting the bike rack installed in our car and the guy basically told us to go away for an hour and come back so we just walked to have lunch while we were there so I don't really feel guilty about that either because I feel like it was kind of justified because where else were we going to go? Um, I also spent £10 in the Strand Cinema, the charity cinema that I was telling you about where I take my kids for the free matinees at the weekend and I bought popcorn and drinks there for us and I don't actually feel bad about that because it's supporting the charity and I just like I think you're getting the movie for free so that's not bad. I felt like I had a big slip up yesterday and I was asking myself have I cheated my, in my no buy? Basically, well, first of all, we went to the pumpkin patch, but that was pre-booked before my no-buy month, so I didn't actually spend any money on that this month. Um, it, it's a tradition that I do with my kids every year, and I do feel like we all really enjoy it as a family. My partner does too, and it's just like, I don't mind spending money on making memories. Like, I feel like every time we go to something like that, I come away feeling like... It's something I'll kind of treasure after the event and I will will have something to discuss as a family and laugh about. And there was part of it where they did a pumpkin smash and my partner really loved that and it was just funny watching him like beating the pumpkin um, with this bat and uh, yeah I've just never seen him have so much fun before. So he got me a coffee while we were there. I did think ahead and I brought brownies that I made. I brought water for everyone and I brought food that I picked up beforehand for lunch so the coffee was the only purchase and he bought it for me so I don't know if that counts. Last night we went to an event that my friend had told me about that was like it was like a fireworks display and a fairground combined so it was like basically a Halloween event that we'd never been to before. It was £10 for all four of us to go so I thought since I was booking ahead it was like a good idea because it was very like a low budget choice basically and it would be something like nice to do and we love going to like firework displays. When we got there it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be like I arrived with the girls and my partner hadn't been able to come with us because he was sick so he stayed home and it was just the three of us and it was like in a place that I wasn't familiar with so first of all we were trying to navigate the parking situation the traffic last night I don't know if it's just always like that on Saturday night and I'm not aware because we don't really go out on Saturday nights but 
to get like what would normally be a 20 minute journey it took us an hour to get there and it was like torrential rain so it wasn't really a good start we got parked handily enough to the event and walked in because there was no parking allowed on site and uh I kind of felt like when we got there, I was like, what did we actually pay for? I'm assuming the money was for just like allowing the event to take place on the fireworks. But it was one of those events where I feel like it kind of tricks you because you think you've paid for something and it's reasonable value. But when you arrive, you realize you actually have to pay for everything once you're there. And I didn't want to disappoint the girls because I had said we were going to a Halloween event and I felt like they had got all excited about it on the, in the car and they'd been really patient during the drive and it took a long time. So when we got there, there was like a fairground and I couldn't really work out at first how you paid or if you paid for it or if it was included. And the number of people there was just insane. Like I'm not very good with crowds and packed places and I get really overstimulated by it and I kind of feel like I have to recover after it and it was just way too much for me like I don't even know how many people were there but it felt like everybody that lived in Northern Ireland was in that one park and I thought the weather would have put more people off but apparently not um because everybody went anyway but we the girls were really excited because they always want to go to like a fairground and we we tend to avoid those because I know you have to pay for every ride and it, it quickly adds up And I also just don't fully trust the rides sometimes because I know there was an accident on one a few years ago here and I just worry about that kind of thing. I'm never really sure how sturdy they are if they're like very easily movable rides. Anyway, um, so we went on one ride while we were there. It was nine pounds for all three of us. It was, it took about two minutes. It was basically a fun house type of thing. The queue was enormous. So we probably queued for it for about 20 minutes to half an hour. The girls absolutely loved it. I was kind of underwhelmed, but I was happy that they enjoyed it so much. And I went on it with them because I was afraid that if I didn't, I would lose them because there were so many people there. It was the type of situation where if you lost your child, you'd never find them again, which sort of scared me a bit. So we went on that and then we didn't go on any other rides and the queuing thankfully kind of prevented us from doing that anyway. Plus I hadn't brought any cash with me, which I've realized is a good tip. If you don't want to spend money at an event like that, don't bring cash because it will limit what you can do. Um, So we then went to the Dinky Donuts stall because I know my kids love that and I got them little donuts covered with chocolate sauce and marshmallows and they were so happy about that and I brought I bought some donuts to bring back for my partner to make him feel better because he was sick so that was like 14 pounds for donuts which sounds a bit crazy as well so overall on top of the 10 pounds for the event which my partner had actually paid for we paid 24 pounds which for one ride and some donuts to me seems crazy but I know those events they do kind of tend to exploit people because they know they can and they've got them in the grounds and they know that their kids are going to want to do things and they like you're not just going to be able to stand there and just stare into space like it feels like you have to in some way get involved and I didn't want my kids to feel like they'd missed out but we actually left before the fireworks display because I think we had all just had enough it was too many people and The weather was bad and we had like 45 minutes to wait for the firework display. So I felt a bit disappointed. We left before the main reason that we went, but I was also really relieved to kind of get out of there. And surprisingly after it, the girls were really positive about it and they were telling me like how amazing it was. And it it was interesting, like watching other people going on the crazy rides and things like that, but it's just not my kind of thing. And I just found it too much and I felt guilty after it because I felt like I had cheated in my no buy because I had like paid for rides and snacks but I felt at the same time like those expenses were sort of unavoidable in the circumstances because if I hadn't done those two things the girls would have felt like they'd completely missed out because we would have literally gone there for no reason since we didn't see the fireworks display so I feel like maybe I just need to accept that that was unnecessary expense under the circumstances and maybe that 
is something you can apply to your no buy like so that you're not beating yourself up if you spend like unplanned money because you can't always control the situation that you're in and it's hard when you have kids as well and you don't want them to be the only ones that have something that aren't getting what everyone else is and they do look around and see oh that kid has got like one of those light up wand things that are like 10 pounds and they'll die within a day and they have like candy floss and they've got a toy and they've gone on like 15 rides so I feel like in comparison to that we were quite restrained with it but it just wasn't if I had known that there would be so many kind of hidden expenses in it I probably wouldn't have gone and especially with the weather the way it was but yeah like overall I'm wondering do you consider that to be cheating in a no buy month and do you consider think other people treating you to things to be like cheating because I haven't spent money other than on one cup of coffee and one trip like I said to McDonald's but my partner on his day off his like favorite thing to do is to go to McDonald's for lunch with me so he has treated me to McDonald's once a week and He's also suggested we go to Starbucks a couple of times when the girls have been at clubs in the evening and he has treated me to a latte and I just am wondering do you think that that counts as cheating or not because it's not your own money? I don't really know. I know that answer is probably going to change depending on who you ask but yeah that was what I was kind of asking myself. I feel like it has really been life-changing for me doing this because it's just been a major shock looking at this compared to this. Like, I can't believe how much I was spending just unconsciously, like, all the time. And it's it's actually, yeah, the only word I can think of is shocking. And I thought I was, like, being frugal, but it makes me realise that when you're not consciously kind of monitoring your payments, you can very quickly fall into bad habits and you, you don't even realise the full impact of them. So... I thought before I started the no buy that I would struggle to get through kind of crawling along to the finish line but and I thought I'd probably be parked outside a shop waiting for it to open on the 1st of November but actually I feel like instead of that I might have a couple of things in mind that I think would be useful purchases that I've mentioned in the month like for example um, the hood that I wanted to get to wear with coats that don't have hoods because I do think that would be useful but I don't feel like I want to just spend for no reason and I don't feel like I want to rush out and have like a, a shopping spree the minute it's done and I know that Christmas is coming up too so it's wise to continue being frugal and it has just inspired me to keep going I really want to do a no buy year now I feel like it is changing my values and it is it's just making me look at everything in life differently and making me realise how much a victim of like consumerism I've been even if I didn't think I was and how we all kind of are in our own way and um, how easy it is to fall into that trap. So yeah, I just feel really motivated to continue saving money and being careful. I also noticed during my no buy month that if I got a surprise payment through that I normally would be sent into a panic about, I wasn't in a panic because I hadn't wasted the money on other things. So I had the money there to cover it. For example, my car tax renewal came up, which came and it came through earlier than I had expected. I thought it would be through in November. Um, and I was able to pay that without stressing about it. And there was something else. I paid like a deposit on my kids Christmas presents and that wasn't like an enormous stressor where like normally it would have been um and there was something else was it? I can't remember now there was another like payment that came through that was like a it was like a bill oh I know what it was there was a vet's bill which I was a surprise to me but I did have the money sitting for it and it wasn't a big deal so I just think in every way it has been beneficial to me. I also like the fact that it has made my kids curious about what I'm doing and they want to know what it means to do a no-buy and why I'm doing it and it's a good way to teach your kids about budgeting because I feel like a lot of kids never, they either aren't taught about it at all or they, the only 
awareness they have of budgeting is hearing parents stressing about money. So it's a good way to make them view it in a positive light. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful to someone and yeah, keep going if you're doing a no buy. I still have four months, four months, four days left of mine and I don't feel the need to stop going with it. Like I'm just going to try and continue to live consciously with my finances and to buy things like that I have thought through and that I genuinely know I'm going to value long term instead of things that I'm going to regret the next day and that I just feel compelled to buy in the moment. So yeah, thanks for joining me. Hi to any new subscribers. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and I'll make another video soon. Bye.